Introduction. Do you think much about the future? You don't have to be very flexible to agree that the future could pan out in inshpimi ways. Right before the pandemic, people were celebrating the coming of year 2020, believing it will signal a new future. There would very much be a decade of newfound strength and positive change. What we really saw was a shed fest, horrendously different from the utopian reality we wished we could live. And it only got worse as the months passed by. Not just that, but we are presented with the undeniable fact that it will not get any better anytime soon. The pandemic may go, but world hunger, poverty, wars, global warming, politics, scarcity of water, corruption, those won't go. What I'm trying to say is, we imagined, or rather hoped, that the world would be one way. To the point where we made our own image of what it would be like, down to the finer details, that we were presented with a calamity, a virus that struck out and destroyed our sanity, trust in each other, and their wallets. Now, do you think much about what the present could have been? Do you find yourself thinking about the past, making different choices, examining each word that came out of your mouth and how you could have said it in all sorts of intonations to affect the outcome? You see that for every choice, there are generally numerous possibilities, although they are confined to your own mind. Just wild ideas and speculations, not hard truths and facts. You don't really know what would have happened if your intonation would have changed. You can infer, but part of you also has bias. Possibly for favorable outcomes, maybe not. Okay, so it's sort of hard to think about it now, but what if the virus never broke out the way it did? We saw the news of COVID in China months before it broke out in the entire world, yet we didn't really care until it reached other countries, our own, then our city. So what if we reacted in time? What would the year 2020 have looked like? What would year 2021 look like? What would future years look like? What would your own life look like? Truth is, there probably is no present without the pandemic. The only way we could have prevented the pandemic was if we all wore masks and followed the rules of hygiene that we follow now, some of us at least. But for that to happen, we would have had to have already been on our toes about viruses and pandemics. Such are humans that we don't learn from our own mistakes, we just move on as if nothing happened. The ugly truth is, there is probably no future without climate change either. We can be hopeful. But as much as we individuals try, we have already crossed so many thresholds that the future just looks bleak. But this ugly ass truth is accompanied by a little revelation that we have all had in the past. We will look back to this very moment and reminisce. Now, pause the video. Think about the questions I asked a little. Let them sink in and then continue watching. So... In what way do these questions relate to the topic at hand? A little analyzing and you might have noticed that these questions both pose possibilities. Outcomes that might be, or could have been. Similar, if you put the dots together you can see that I could have asked another question. That is, in what way could the past be different? This one is similar to the what could the present have been if question, just that it doesn't relate itself to the present. Rather, it focuses on how the past would have differed. In reality, they are the same question, just shifting the now back to the past and asking from the point of view of someone from the future. Another amusing question is, how would someone from the future imagine a different current present? This is, again, the same question, just worded differently. It relates itself to the now. But the now isn't the past, but rather the now that you are living at the moment, in the pandemic. Such as the future is unknown to us, that being the only difference between this and the last question, where the future was the current present, which we are aware of. <laughs> Sorry for playing with your brains, but I found this whole topic a little too funny not to converse about. I mean, when else can you talk about the other possible futures in a literary way? This is the perfect video. It is a sci-fi video after all. Did you like the transition? 
if the introduction captivated you, then we're off to a great start. Maybe not a great rest of the video, we will see. So hello ho my fellow drumsticks, I'm Snare. Welcome to my video covering the topic of sci-fi and achieving the tenable future aesthetic in sound form. What is sci-fi? Let us begin by clearing up some nomenclature. What is sci-fi? Well, no matter how you ask, the general idea of sci-fi is a possible existence with different scientific findings and possibilities than of our own worlds. These are speculatory, so they could refer to a far future where the creator of the sci-fi story thinks of plausible ways science could evolve. Think Jules Verne. Wait, why is he low-key daddy? Um, his works are some of the first science fiction the world has seen. If you're not familiar with Jules Verne, he is a 19th century French novelist and his works revolved around the interesting and at the time mind-boggling fictional inventions. He has successfully and somewhat accurately predicted a lot of future creations, the hot air balloon, submarines, the fucking moon landing, and for that he is called the daddy of science fiction. Okay, just the dad, but like, I like calling him daddy. So why do I mention Jules Verne? Well, outside of him being the founder of sci-fi, there is another reason, and I'll get back to that in a bit. Science fiction is a genre of speculative fiction that typically deals with imaginative and futuristic concepts, such as advanced science and technology, space exploration, time travel, parallel universes, and extraterrestrial life. Random Google search. That is the closest that I could find to a textbook definition. Weirdly, it's not all-encompassing. The true all-encompassing definition of sci-fi is sci-fi, they can literally, fiction of science. Now, the aforementioned definition does have semblance to what people generally think of when you mention sci-fi to them. For this, I asked a few of my friends to defy sci-fi to me with no context and no googling allowed. Let's look at some of your answers. First is my friend Binox. Can I say a list of words? Yeah. White, blue, cold, smart, fast, complex. Sounds like the definition of an AMWF. An elf? No, an AMWF. Not falling for that trap. An alien would fuck. A xenomorph? I'm not googling anything that comes out of your keyboard ever again. <laughs> what did you google? Xenomorph? Nothing. You got any more words? Hmm, I don't know, futuristic? Out of reach? Is it a picture in your head, but too complex to understand it yet clean? You know what I feel like when I think of sci-fi? Hold on. I think of these motherfuckers. Oh my god, this show? I liked it as a kid, never knew the name. I don't know, the family's name is Jetson. Second comes Ivy Stahl. Can you define sci-fi to me? Science fiction. The type I most often see and I associate as is modernism, futurism, alien, extraterrestrial, aliens. But sometimes I also like dystopia like world so yeah that's words I would think of when I think of sci-fi. Third and last comes Technocosm. Hey, I have a little question to ask. Can you define sci-fi to me without googling it? Just what you would define it as in your own words. I guess I would define sci-fi as a genre of fiction where the plot or setting is based on technology that doesn't yet exist outside the world of the story. Okay, thanks. Wh what? From all these things, we can pretty much conclude that what sci-fi is and what people are accustomed to when you mention sci-fi are not the same thing. With that in mind, let's look at what people don't generally think of when they think of sci-fi. Remember when I said that I will be coming back to Jules Verne? Well, this is what I do. Jules Verne is not only the father of sci-fi, but also the backbone of the steampunk aesthetic. All of his works fit into the steampunk genre. What many don't think of when you say steampunk is that it's a subgenre of sci-fi. Specifically, sci-fi set in the past where electricity is not the norm, but rather a different kind of science emerges. This subgenre generated a very interesting and new aesthetic, referenced in the name steampunk. A sort of punk aesthetic, very gothic and rustic, where most apparatus functions with the help of steam. 
Not all steampunk uses steam, but a large amount do. Some use cogs and metal mechanics, similar to clockwork, which is very much pronounced in steampunk works. Some use magic as a fictional type of electricity with unique properties. There are also steampunk works that do have electricity, most focusing on Tesla's creations as a way of steering into new discoveries that differ from our own worlds as duplication, teleportation, new dimensions, etc. All said in the past. Remember when at the start I asked you those questions? Then I told you you can ask similar questions that are in the same realm and follow the same pattern? Or how you can ask the same question but in different time periods? That is what sci-fi and steampunk really are. Steampunk is just a form of sci-fi but in the past. Same question, different setting. Basically brothers or sisters or whatever. Why do I mention this? Well, although I described steampunk, I will not delve deeper into it and other subgenres of sci-fi, if there are any as notable as steampunk. Instead, I will be focusing on what people generally think of as being sci-fi. Reason why I also took the time to familiarize you with the textbook definition and what people think of it. So to make it extra clear, present and futuristic works are the only ones that I will talk about. Although this video will help you ease and understand all aesthetics needed for you to actually produce a song that can be called sci-fi. The Music Fury I'm gonna be honest, I'm a complete noob at music theory. I'm not a jazz hands true master level 99 or whatever. I only know the basics, but I think that's good because everything that I've read online seems to have mostly focused on the compositional aspect of the tracks rather than the sound design. And I truly shine when it comes to the sound design. Let's first talk about the goal of the sci-fi's composition. Depending on what you're making the song for, be it a game, movie, album, etc. You usually will have to achieve the emotions and aesthetic that you are looking for in different ways. Speaking broadly, most of the time it's going to be a usual composition with hints of futuristic or modern elements. Interesting things put in that you wouldn't hear in a typical composition. What you're trying to do is bring out the already existing aesthetic and enhance it with your music. Think of a Halloween movie. A Halloween movie by itself, be it horror or not, will usually have the Halloween note to it. But the moment that you add the blood-curdling strings and the other weird Halloween-esque sounds, you contour it and make it sound like it's truly taking place on the Night of the Dead. <laughs> okay, that was lame. So let me just tell you some of the things that I've gathered from articles that I read online, alongside some small things that I picked up by myself while making the genre. Firstly, you can get a pretty interesting and alien sound by playing around with major and minor scales, switching between them from time to time. This gives everything a very wondrous and almost evil sound to your track sometimes. But other times it can be used to have very quick mood changes in the music. Expanding on that, you can play around with sudden key switches. Similar to how rave stabs work, you just change the chords up and down by certain intervals based on the melody itself. This can give you all sorts of vibes and is not only useful for sci-fi but other genres as well because of its versatility. Other things that I saw were playing around in major scales for sections and building harmonies or very hollow ones, like just a root and a seven for example. Alongside that, having very stable staccato rhythms, so it has on every fourth, eighth, etc. and quantized arps and counter melodies that harmonized in tasty ways with the compositions. Now listing some of the things that I picked up by myself. Playing with different tunings to get new feelings and also to mix them to create tension is a go-to. Microtonal tunings and completely out of tune slash randomized melodies are also really interesting at times if you can make them work with the music. Rhythmically entertaining drums and melodies are also very welcomed as well. Also try playing around with silence and sudden loudness. It usually creates a really interesting contrast that helps tense up your music. Would you believe that this entire section was this short? I tried my best to add as much information here, but I feel like it's more beneficial to spend more time instead in the next section. The sound design. Truly, where sci-fi shines as a musical genre is in its unique and otherworldly sound design. At least for me. You see it everywhere. Huge brands leading into alien reverberating basses. Mechanical monstrosities that flange and morph. Distant shrieks of god knows what abominations. All of this is your typical sci-fi sound design. But it goes deeper. Since the genre is so varied, the styles of music that accompany it is also very fast. Many songs have analog and modular instruments with hints of vintage and retro processing and details. Some have very modern sounds but they are made to be organic and crisp to modern standards. Let's delve a little into some of the sound related things that can bring your sci-fi music to the next level or generation. <laughs> Get it? 
<laughs> no, okay. First, let's cover some more modern techniques. Pads and under sustaining harmonic sounds are very popular, alongside metallic drones and low sustaining reeses. Truth is, anything synth is welcomed in a general sci fi song. Some ways you can make great pads is taking already existing melodies, chords, or sounds and running them through the Edison blur function, if you have that, or a lot of reverb, or granulizing them in a granular delay, like M granulizer, MB, portal, or what have you. These techniques give you a smooth, rich, morphing sound. On top of that, you can apply more creative processing like neurofiltering, flanging, etc. and add a low pass, a touch of short reverb, an OTT, or any heavy compression to glue it more. This turns your background pad into the centerpiece of the track. You can also think about layering real instruments with synths to create new and interesting colors, or to just beef them up. Sounds that have interesting harmonic qualities to them bring out interesting vibes and feelings. Play around with textured instruments and different sounds, like very low saws with brass, pianos with simplex, a music box with a noisy and upfront lead, and process them together where possible. This can give you that hybrid, monstrous, unique quality and sounds, and also give you new sides to orchestra libraries you haven't heard before. Crisp distortion, creative filtering, reverb, extreme compression, so many options. Don't just limit yourself to what you know works. Be creative. Taking from that, you can play with sampling instruments or having creative and destructive processing on them if they're not being layered. Distorted pianos, detuned strings, low pass basses, etc. Not only that, but play them in the ranges that they're not usually played in. Very low piano melodies, very high tubas, etc. And see how they work in your song. It is also the space where you can use analog sounds, from drum machines to modular setups, to create intricate and developing textures. Those weird phase 808 hi hat loops that you never thought you'd need suddenly become a really intriguing option. Those ugly glitches and extreme textures that are a bit too alien can now shine. Let the sounds do their work the way they are. And don't worry about realism, use fake sounds to fake real aesthetics, like fake rain and wind and so on. More so, this is the genre where you can experiment with noise and unusual textures. Anything that you recorded, from random speaking to the metallic ambience of a factory, can be turned to an atmosphere and used as music. This can be achieved by doing granular processing on it and then adding creative filtering and effects, followed by extreme compression. Basically, then you're away. What's important is that the sound morphs and that you can tap into its full potential. So when you granulize it, you want to make sure that you are also pitching it randomly, not just stretching and glitching it. Extreme pitch changes can give you new rhythms and tones to play around with and slice into your song. As far as the processing goes, filtering, distortion, compression, and so on until you get a nice sound will do the job. At the end, you might want to consider adding an OTT to glue it. Also, don't forget to use delay and reverb along the way. Not as mixing tools, but as creative effects inside the processing chain. You can also play around with folly and different sound design elements to create depth and life in your music. If you have any sound design sample pack, you're in luck. Just bring those sounds right over and do exactly what I mentioned you can do with your noise and textures. You can also use these raw and integrate them like that. Like I said before, anything electronic could be considered sci-fi. Not everything sci-fi has to be electronic though, so don't limit yourself. Experiment and see what works. In the end, we shouldn't serve the genre, the genre should serve us. Some aesthetics you can achieve are, for example, alien themes from horror to adventure. You can get space aesthetics, very quiet and profound, magical and wondrous, futuristic vibes like cyberpunk and other futuristic works, or use more modern and abstract sounds to create the feeling of being in the future, and much more. Sci-fi is very complex and can be combined with many other genres like adventure, action, and so on. But what I listed were just a few examples. What I'm going to tell you next is probably going to make them obsolete. Even so, they will help you better understand the trick to nailing the sci-fi theme. The secret sauce. It's all about the context. There, you have it. That's the secret to making sci-fi music. The best thing about sci-fi is the listener themselves. They can be fooled to think anything fits as sci-fi, as long as they expect it to be sci-fi and it doesn't break their illusion. Imagine the fantasy genre. Where is it usually placed in time? Most often in the past or in an alternate present or world where magic is a replacement to science. Think for a second, what instruments do you imagine they should use? Well, if you said the orchestra, think again. Wouldn't fantasy actually house imaginary instruments or new and unheard ones? Well, maybe if you said Harry Potter, no. But if you said Lord of the Rings or anything else, wouldn't it be something weird and unusual? 
maybe if not imaginary, taken from European and Asian folk. But it's not like that. The orchestra is the most widely used simply because it does the job at expressing the emotions. And these instruments, the harp, violins, soaring trumpets, etc., have been agreed upon as being most fit for a realistic fantasy composition. That is, because of the context. The context makes it so that the true fantasy instruments are not really the true ones anymore. In reality, they change with the people's perception of what fantasy music should sound like, making it the real sound of fantasy. Interestingly, this does not take away from anything else that could be the sound of fantasy, you see. Similar to how you can be convinced in that way, you can be convinced that sci-fi music can just be all orchestra, for example. This contextual expectation from the listener is what you can wield to get more out of your music. Simply think about the context and see if it fits the mood. The context will paint it as sci-fi for you. Now, given you can't break the illusion either, similar to how I can't have Russian hard bass in a fantasy song, most of the times anyway. You shouldn't just expect that everything will imply to the listener that it's sci-fi just because of the situation. Instead, you should focus on making the composition good, then adding small things from time to time to make sure that it's clear where it has to be, that you're still watching or listening to something science fiction. With that said, I encourage you to experiment with your tracks and always try new things. Even if it doesn't pan out, it hurts more to miss out on something good than to try and fail. So, now, we have reached the conclusion of this video essay. And I hope to dear God that it's not going to be longer than 40 minutes, <laughs> but seeing the size of the script, uh, well... I have recently put out my first soundtrack for a real game, the name of the game being Lonely, Lustful, Arrogant, Hateful. And if you like the music in the background, well, it's from that. Some of it, anyway. There is the whole four song soundtrack, so please have a listen and tell me what you think. I worked countless hours on it and have perfected a lot in that time. It's also how I gathered a lot of the information for this video. Yet again, thank you for watching. If you like this, hit the like button. More is coming, so consider subscribing as well. It helps me keep going with interesting videos. And don't shy away from telling me what you think. I try to reply to all my comments. Goodbye.